Any one of Robert Chandler's accomplishments makes him a leading international figure. Agricultural scientist, professor, horticulturist, university president, soil scientist, institute director, consultant, and world-renowned expert on food production, especially rice. Rice is one of the world's most important crops. Over two billion people depend on it for their staple food. But throughout much of the 20th century, rice yields were low and stagnant. As populations rose, there were shortages, and even the most productive rice-producing countries had to import rice to feed their people. In the late 50s, the Rockefeller Foundation and the Ford Foundation joined forces to work on this problem. Their mandate was to increase rice production. In 1960, they formed the International Rice Research Institute, known as ERI. It was located in the Philippines, just outside Manila in Los Banos, adjacent to the College of Agriculture. Dr. Robert Chandler, who had become an authority on rice when he traveled throughout Asia for the Rockefeller Foundation, was chosen as the first director. Dean Rusk was president of the Rockefeller Foundation at the time. Well, I saw a man who uh, was able to roll up his sleeves and work in the fields and in the laboratories with uh, his colleagues. I saw a man who was uh, skilled at uh, organizing research to achieve the purposes which, which they were trying to uh, bring about. Um, he was uh, agreeable, warm-hearted, uh, easy to work with. Uh, he, uh, he was just the ideal man for the spot. Bob Chandler grew up on a farm in Maine. He was one of six children, and they're still a close family today. After earning a B.S. from the University of Maine and a Ph.D. from the University of Maryland, he joined academia, first as a professor at Cornell, then at the University of New Hampshire as dean of the College of Agriculture and later as president of the university. As director of Erie, Dr. Chandler oversaw the building of the labs and the clearing of land for the experimental fields. He chose the staff and the team of scientists, and they got to work immediately. We are wondering why it is that rice yields are so low, and we have already found here at the Institute that it is possible to get as much as six times the national average here in the Philippines of rice by treating it correctly. They crossed short varieties of rice from Japan and Taiwan with local tall rices. They dealt with the effects of fertilizers, irrigation, climate, sunlight, diseases, insects, and other predators. Bob and his team, uh, I'm sure you'd want to give credit to his team, uh, they conquered all of those in a, in, a, in a simple a way that could be followed by simple farmers throughout the Orient. He was enthusiastic, he had the vision, he was a uh, boundless energy, uh, and he knew what he was about to try to do, and he, and he knew how he was going to try to do it. And believe me, it's not easy to take a, an international group of scientists and administrators and people who speak different languages and come from different cultures, totally different cultures, and weld them into a, an operative team that's going to really uh, do a difficult thing that's never been done before. In just a few years, they took a six-foot rice plant that would fall over in the water and rot and bred it into a sturdy three-foot plant. They shortened the growing period from 200 days to 130 and later down to 105 days. This new rice plant was resistant to insects and disease and needed less daylight. The first major step forward was a rice they called IR-8. With it, Bob Chandler and his team revolutionized Asia's rice crop, tripling the yield potential. And that was a big change, and that opened up whole new vistas for the rice farmer in Asia. The germplasm, or seeds, of this new variety were sent to over 80 countries worldwide. More and more farmers began to grow it and see a difference. The world began to look toward Erie, and world leaders recognized its importance. President Lyndon Johnson stopped there in 1965. If we are to win our war, and the only important war that really counts, if we are to win our war against poverty, and against disease, and against ignorance, and against illiteracy, and against hungry stomachs, then we have got to succeed in projects like this. And you are pointing the way for all of Asia to follow. World Bank had Robert McNamara paid a visit, as did Queen Beatrix of Holland, and UN Secretary U Tant. Because of Erie, countries like India, Indonesia, and the Philippines 
which at one time it had to import rice, became self-sufficient and now even export rice. Without Erie, the fate of Asia might have been very different. Dr. Chandler's achievements and those of Erie can best be measured by what did not happen. The new rice technology averted the time of famines. Miracles happened at Erie while Bob Chandler was its director, and it's for this work at Erie that he is being awarded the General Foods World Food Prize. Bob Chandler retired from Erie in 1972 when he turned 65, but age has never slowed him down. He went from Los Banos right to Taiwan to become the first director of the Asian Vegetable Research and Development Center. Again, he changed plant types and made significant changes in food production. Bob and his wife, Sunny, divide their time these days between a house in Florida and a farm in Maine. They travel, and Bob still consults and writes on agricultural issues. Growing things to their full potential is in Bob's veins. He's turned his attention to pumpkins now, 427-pound pumpkins that win contests for miles around. Those who know Dr. Robert Chandler and his work believe he is more than deserving of the General Foods World Food Prize. I'm glad that they're finally catching up with you and giving you a big prize. I'm sure you'll spend it wisely and for good. And that uh, I hope you take enormous satisfaction uh, from what was accomplished and from the fact that there are millions and millions of people out there eating better today because you were able to do something with rice that hadn't been done since the days it began. Um, I'm on an airplane and um, Bob, all I can say is that uh, knowing you, working with you, having been inspired by you, uh, was really a, uh, an immense experience. I'm only sorry I'm not with you now. Bob, we uh, are very proud of you and draw deep satisfaction from the work that you've accomplished in your lifetime particularly as director of the International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines, which in fact is a monument to you. And uh, we congratulate you on that and extend you our very best wishes.